um, CD and some of the song. Uh, I, I too was thinking about her this morning, her song. And I was thinking about um, the one everybody ought to know who Jesus is. If you know that, you can help me sing it in Jesus' name. It's like a uh, repeat. Everybody, everybody ought to know, ought to know who, Jesus is. who Jesus is. Everybody, everybody ought, to know, ought to know who Jesus is. have a seat praise be to God and and I just love I, I'm just just trying to you know I'm not like my husband hopefully I won't be as long as he is but to fill up some of the time for the program uh, I remember last Saturday praise be to God when evangelist um, Catherine and Van, evangelist Tyler, Tyler was on the street and you know I thank God for the Holy Ghost if anyone out in the audience that don't have the Holy Ghost, you should receive it. It's a gift. It's a gift. And in this world, you cannot live without it because the devil will work on you day in and out and you'll lose your mind. But see, Jesus said, I go to the Father, but I will send you a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I just thank God for the Holy Spirit. And it's time for God, people, to start falling in love with Jesus. Yes. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I ever done. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I ever done. I wish Sister Booker Daughter was here, praise God, D Dion, because truly that's one of the songs that a mother sung, falling in love with Jesus. And you know, no matter what you're going through, the more you fall in love with Jesus, the better your spiritual man will be. You know, so much we try to fix the outside, but it's the inside that's troubling you. It's the inside that need, that soul need to be healed and set free of its past because that inner man will sometimes try to bring back what has happened. And Jesus, when you accept Christ, 
He no longer remember those past sins that we have done. And you know, for some reason, I was going through so many things, and like we all do go through many things, but I believe in the truth. And I believe in telling the truth because the truth is Jesus. And I know that I can't get to heaven no other way but the truth. Sometimes people don't hear the whole truth. They just hear part of the truth. But as you go to the courtroom, and I was saying to my daughter, I said, you know what? Now, you went to school to become a lawyer. You learned something today. And I say, if a lawyer have to study religion and witchcraft, meteors, familiar spirits, now, what about the house of God? When God has given men and women the discernment of the Holy Spirit, when unfamiliar spirits come in and you can't discern it, then we need to seek God some more. Yeah. You should be able to rebuke any demon force of spirit. Amen. God has given you that power. And I said, now in the courtroom, you got the judge, you got the lawyers, and they know that these demonic forces witchcraft. And I said to the young man yesterday, I said, don't you know that the witchcraft spirits in the drugs what do you think make these young people so wild and confused and even to the older people? Because when they pass it out, they want them to keep coming and so they can get rich off of them and slowly the devil is killing them and poisoning them. It's witchcraft. And God people sit in the house of God and can't even discern it. Can't even discern when sin is in the camp. Everybody is not going to listen to sound doctrine as we have to teach our children. We teach them right from wrong. God has men and women over, over his people to instruct them. We're not the good shepherd. We're just the shepherd. But Jesus is the good shepherd. And long as you read this Bible, you'll find the good shepherd because sometimes shepherds can lead you wrong. But you should have the Holy Spirit to discern whether it is God or not. Amen. And Lord, I went down to the basement. And I'll tell you the truth again. I could not stand up here and preach or teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Living a lie. And I always say, if you want to know the truth, come and ask me. I will tell you the truth. And I was saying, Lord, hmm, I heard so many things that others are saying, so others say that others are saying. Then I went downstairs in the basement, I started cleaning. And as Evangelist Tyler said earlier in her testimony, he without sin as Jesus stepped on the, stooped down on the ground. I find this rock in my basement. Because I was saying, Lord, uh, where's my, I said, what's going on? And then the Holy Spirit, you accused for everything. There's so much to talk about you and against you. Then it said, he that is walked without sin among you, let him cast the first stone, Jesus Christ. So I said, Lord, you let me go in the basement when trouble has arrived. Who in the world could find a little stone like this and all those things, the boxes and everything? But this stone, God said, I will give you a word that I call you and you must do what I say do. Whether they, others believe it or not. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to go into the word, praise God. Amen. You could turn your Bible to John, the 14th chapter. And Jesus talked about keeping, keep my commandment. Amen. And what I got out of reading this is, 
how to win the father love. Everybody's talking about winning man love. Your brother in love. How can you win your brother in love when you have not even won God love? You can't put man love in front of God. Because you're going to miss out the kingdom of God. You're trying so hard to love me. But less time to love God. Because in John 14, God said he will be in you. But we have to recognize who Jesus is. And once you recognize who Jesus is, then you can go on with your life. Don't let nobody deter you from walking with God. I said to my husband, you know, sometimes I can understand when there are children that need to be held by the hand. But when you're grown, Paul said, when I was a child, I spent as a child. But now I'm a man. Hallelujah. I put away childish things. But when you're trying to raise an adult, you're going to have some issues. You're going to have some very bad issues. Because unfamiliar spirit is going to creep in and say, I don't like the way he says things. I don't like the way he do things. So you know what? If I can't have my way, then I'm going to make somebody else come on my side. But when you come in Jesus, you stay on the Lord's side. If your husband mess up, if the wife mess up, if the children mess up, you stay on the Lord's side. But if you trust God that he will bring them, you must believe that God sent Jesus. You must know who Jesus is. A lot of people don't know. They said, oh, I know God. Hmm. But if they knew Jesus, they, always, they will know God. Amen. And I'm going to just read a little of this. Praise God. And hopefully I won't be too long. But we want to talk about today how to win the father love. You want to fall in love with somebody? Fall in love with Jesus. I know I did. And it's the best thing that could ever happen to me. Praise be to God. And I'm going to start, praise God, at... Um, it said, well, maybe I'll just go to a little part by, of the first verse. It said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe so all, also in me. He said, in my father's house of many mansions, if it was not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Now, wait a minute. Jesus said, he, he's speaking prophecy of himself to his disciples. He said, I'm going to go away. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to prepare a place for you, that means he's coming back, right? Amen. He's coming back. Amen. So we, we got to learn how to, to win the Father love. Amen. Now, we know Jesus is coming back. Third verse said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Wait a minute. Amen. Now, we know that we have some loved ones going home with the Lord. Amen. But God promised us, promised them, promised the disciple that I'm going to prepare a place for you and even know. You have to lead this old world. Yeah. Amen. Don't worry because you're going to be with me. Amen. So stop trying to fall in love with men and fall in love with Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's the best thing that could ever happen to you. Amen. It's not the saying that eventually when you fall in love with Jesus, he said, love one another Amen. as I have loved you. 
But how can you love somebody when you don't even know what God love is all about? It's not this fleshly love, this guppy love. I love you, honey, sweetheart. And all of a sudden, he or she mess up on you. And then let's give the enemy a crack to move in angry. When angry spirits get in angry, do not care who it hurts, who it kills, who it whack, walk over. It do not care. It's a spirit from the devil. And I hate the devil. I hate him. He creeps in unaware. Amen. Because when you don't know how to win God love, mm -hmm. fall in love with Jesus. Love he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Matthew, I think, 633. Yeah. And all is righteousness. Mm -hmm. God, right, my righteousness can nothing compared to God, but because God see Jesus, righteousness in me. Amen. And even when I've done wrong, I go to the Father. Father, I can't do this righteous, but you can. I'm under your blood covering. See, your blood covering, your bloodline is connected with Jesus. Your mother, mother, father, 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 from generation, generation, accepted Jesus. When they were impregnated with you, hallelujah, you was in that womb. The bloodline of Jesus is connected to you. Yet why we was in our mother's womb? The enemy has some of us to go all kind of ways. But he forgot the connection with the bloodline. Hallelujah, that the Lord brought us right back in because it was our appointed time. Don't beat up yourself because you didn't come five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago to the Lord, but you're here today. You got happy. You say, I could have been dead and gone. It ain't no power like God's power. It ain't no love like God love. I dare you to try Jesus. Fall in love with him. Hallelujah. You'll say, wait a minute. You'll tell that boyfriend and that uh, uh, girlfriend or that husband or that wife and say, you know what? You ain't got nothing on Jesus. Because he's sweeter than the honey on the honeycomb. Hallelujah. David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you're never falling in love with Jesus, I recommend you taste him. Yeah. Hallelujah. He'll introduce himself to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He'll put his arms around you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He'll wrap his, hallelujah, his arm yeah. around you. Yeah. Praise be to God. We are carved in the palm of his hand. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He was just telling Israel, you know, I, I, I chose you for a reason. But thank God we as a Gentile, hallelujah, God just uh, drafted us in by the blood, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Oh, my God. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. You are loved today. In spite of all your sin, you are loved today. God just want to tell you, you know what? Grace say you already forgiven. Yeah. Who is grace? Jesus. Yeah. And, and what do he want to do, Sister Booker? Say he wants to be your friend. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Jesus wants to be your friend. Yeah. You don't have to go out and commit suicide and say, oh, nobody loves me. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Jesus loves you. Yeah. I recommend that you try Jesus. Yeah. Praise be to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think I stopped at the fourth verse. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. So Jesus let you know I'm going to tell you where I'm going. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. So you don't have to say, well, he ain't showed up yet. <laughs> well, maybe I should go back and do the sin. Well, I done prayed and asked God for the healing and ain't got it yet. Well, maybe I should go and... And uh, to one of these media, and they can tell my fortune. They can't even tell their future. How in the world are they going to tell your fortune? Hallelujah. Because Jesus said they, uh, they are abomination. They're going to be lost anyway. Hallelujah. Because God has no dealing with sin. Amen. And you want to know something from God? 
ask him yourself. Praise be to God. Then he says in the fifth verse, Thomas said to him, I think we know part of who Thomas is. At the end, we know that he was one of the doubters, didn't believe. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And he asked the question. And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth. Are you looking for the way, the right way? Jesus said, I'm the way. If you go in the wrong direction, you say, Lord, show me the way. Jesus said, I'm the way. Yeah. You looking for the truth? Jesus is the truth. Yeah. And you looking for life? Jesus said, and the life. Yeah. And guess what? No one. On. No one. Everybody say, you know, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. But look what, what the word of God, Jesus said. No one come to the Father except through me. Yeah. I don't care what religion, I don't care what denomination you attend, but if you have not had a personal relationship with Jesus, you still will be lost. You cannot get in God's kingdom. God got some mandates. Hallelujah, without Jesus. Hallelujah, the only gate that you might be able to get into is that gate that opened up the graveyard. Sinners and those that are saved alike go in the graveyard. Amen? Amen? Okay, but if you think you're going to get in the kingdom of God without Jesus, ain't no way. And you can't be saying, well, okay, Lord, I done just heard. But let me tell you, I say to my children, I say to my grandchildren, I say to anybody I know, God is not going to take no adulteress into the kingdom. So if you done got somebody else's wife or husband, you laying up, you ain't, I don't care how much you come to church on Sunday. I don't care how much you shout. I don't care how much you uh, hold some kind of auxiliary. You still going to hell. You don't have to go, but you choose to go. Then you got those that phone hate, phone hate. They ain't married, boyfriend and girlfriend. They call them come along, uh, husband and wife. Well, then if you've been together that long, you just might as well go and get married and do it right because you ain't going in. Then you say, well, all I do, I pray, and then I hear say, you ain't going either. That's what the word of God, you get on, you start bite biking, hear saying, God said it, I didn't do your homework, go search the scripture. There's a concordance, you want to look up the word backbiting. He'll say, look it up, do your homework, and you will save your soul. Patience will save your soul. Amen. 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 Then, here you got, uh, now here you got, uh, wait a minute, a lie? Oh, I told a little white lie. Excuse me. The word of God and then put white or black on it. The word of God say, a lie is a lie. And if you told a lie, you didn't mean to do it. It's a lie. But don't let the Lord catch you with your work undone. Because that little lie will take you right to hell. Right to hell. All these little things. Hearsay. So-and-so and said that. Didn't you say, well, go to so-and-so and ask so-and-so what did they say. Because, because you gossiping about somebody else what you heard, that's hearsay. You mean to tell me, Sister Walker, you mean because I heard what somebody else say and I thought it was right, but it wasn't right? Mm-hmm. Because when you stand before God, I will not be your judge. I'm not your judge. God will be your judge. He will be your judge. Praise be to God. And that's why I tell my children, get your house in order. You can love me, you can hate me, but get your house in order. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you to get it right now because you can't go to heaven any kind of way. God gave every man an F amount of time to repent. Even our thoughts, our thoughts can be wrong. God had to deal with me last year on my thoughts because I met a stranger and my thoughts was thinking wrong. And then all of a sudden, God just began to unfold. And I said, Lord, forgive me. Even my thoughts can be wrong about somebody. I mean, it's a narrow road into the kingdom of God. 
Amen. God ain't going to just say anything. Amen. So this is time. God wants his people to be purged, clean heart, renew a right mind, a right spirit in them. You can serve God better. You can serve God better. You don't have to go in or out of here and saying, oh, here come problem again. So what if you got a pain? Don't you know in due season the Lord will deliver you? Psalm 107 said, hallelujah, God sent his word to heal us out of all our sin. Hallelujah, of all our diseases and of all our trouble and destruction. Sometimes destruction comes in your way. The enemy come in like a wrong line trying to destroy whom it may to see. I mean, your family done got over one hurdle. Here come the devil trying to kill them. Hallelujah, if this ain't the drug, hallelujah. Praise be to God, it's the, it's the adultery, it's the sin. It's the fornication, it's the lying spirits that creep in the house of God. They have no peace because that devil said, I'm going to creep in because I don't want this church to go on. I don't want the saints to move on. Hallelujah, because the devil said his time is running out. And if he can see, he know he got the sinner. So he's working for the saints. Hallelujah, you got to have the whole armor of God on. Praise be to God. Sometimes you might be sick. Jesus was saying there is a sickness that is not of death, and there is a sickness that of death. But Jesus was talking about raising up Lazarus from the dead. And as Jesus raised up Lazarus from the dead, they say he's stinking and smelling. Jesus said, good. Hallelujah. Maybe you'll believe now. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. See, Lazarus was like a, a type of Christ us getting ready to die for our sin and be resurrected. So man couldn't resurrect Lazarus. He wanted his body to sink because we know that this is a miracle. If you ever known somebody die and their body begin to sink and then to decay and everything, but when you believe, see Martha was having a hard time to try to believe. Boy, you mean to tell me this is your friend and you wouldn't come? See, Jesus might not come when you're calling, but he's always on time. Hallelujah. But he knew that Lazarus was going to die and his body was going to stink. Hallelujah. That the Lord said, okay, for your sake, I'm glad he did. Hallelujah. Now, God, Jesus had raised a lot of people from the dead. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And simply, see, Lazarus had to die twice. But Jesus only died once. Amen. Hallelujah. He don't have to die no more. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's sitting at the right hand side of the Lord. He said, I am the resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I will never die. Amen. Praise be to God. So how to win the Father love? Fall in love with Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry. Hallelujah. About my sister or my brother. What are they doing? But then if you see your brethren and your sister, there's a sin, you know, talk to them. Then if you can't talk to them, then you go get somebody else. Then if you can, get, bring it to the church. I would never want to be in a body of Christ where the church couldn't come together if they have an issue. As long as you hold on to that issue, it's going to stink. And it's going to start smelling. And it's going to rot. And before you know it, ain't nobody in the church but those who stands for righteousness and truth. God don't want nobody to perish. Hallelujah. God don't want nobody to leave the church. But if they choose, that's their choice. The blood should not be required on our hand. What would be required on our hand if we not teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? Then that blood will be cried on our hand. But the choice they want to leave, that's up to them. Praise be to God. We got to know who he is. We got to know the God we serve. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't see what verse I stepped in. Ah, oh, praise God. Seven. If you have known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him. 
Philip said, Philip, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. Wait a minute. I mean, Jesus keep repeating himself over. How many times he have to tell you? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father also. That's right. Amen. Then Jesus said to him in verse 9, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? So long, and yet you have not known me. When you pray, when trials and tribulation come, you say you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you know all power belongs to God. Are you willing to trust him and go through the pain? Are you willing to trust him to go through the fire? Or will you just give up and walk away? I find a better, better religion. Ain't no religion better than having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You will have all kind of religion. Hallelujah. Stand for all kind of things. But are they standing for Jesus Christ? Praise be to God. He said in 9 at the end, he said, so have, so how can you say, show us the Father? 10 said, do you not believe that word believe. Do you not believe that I am in the Father? You got to believe it. You have to believe it. And the Father in me, the word, the word that I speak to you, I do not speak them on my own authority. But the Father who dwell in me does the work. Now, if the Father dwell in Jesus, who do you think dwell in us? Yeah. Who do you think dwell in us? The spirit of the Holy Ghost is in us. It's a person. It's real. It'll warn you. It'll keep you. It'll lead you. It'll help you. It's right there. It's right there. You must believe it. I don't care if you feel the Lord. I'm almost to the point of death. Like at the point of death, and the body is so weak. Hallelujah. All you can do is sleep and trust God. You can't even speak. But in your heart, you trust God, and you let the Holy Spirit rest in you, and you don't fight God. All you do is surrender to him. Say, Lord, if it's your will that I wake up, your will be done. If it's your will, I wake up in heaven, your will be done. And when you rest in the Lord, and all of a sudden, you open your eyes. God said, I'm not finished with you yet. Hallelujah. I got more assignment. Hallelujah. You got more assignment to do. Do you know why you was born in this world? Hallelujah. Not to do your will, but to do God's will. Hallelujah. You have to, that flesh have to die daily. That want, that desire, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Then you embrace patience. Amen. That all you go through, Amen. you embrace patience. Amen. Wait on the Lord. Amen. Trust him. Amen. Hallelujah. He will give you a breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't have to wrestle, hallelujah, with the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. You just trust God. Right. Trust him because God is sending a release for you. Amen. Then it says, Believe me, the 11th verse, that I am in the Father. He keeps saying, believe me, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the work, the, for me, for the sake of the works themselves. And the works that God, I don't know how many been through the fire. How many been through the flood? How many didn't think they was going to make it? How many thought that all hope was lost? Yeah. How many? But Jesus stepped right on him. Yeah. Hallelujah. At that last moment, he came through. He said the water won't overflow you. He said the fire won't burn you. Just a little while longer. Everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Don't let that devil, because he messed up things, remember that all things work together for the good. For those that love the Lord, I don't care how up there, look. 
That daughter, that son, that grandson, that husband, that boy could be messed up and drunk. They could be in prison, but God will work it out if you trust him. Hallelujah, he'll work it out. He'll work it out. Don't you know the angels of the Lord is battling on their behalf? Hallelujah, remember that. Hallelujah, you're not alone. Everybody got an angel, menacing angel. You got to trust God. Hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm talking about how to win the Father love and recognize him, recognize Jesus, and, and he will be in you. He's in you. You got to know Jesus in you. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we get a pain, sometimes when we say, you know what, I, I got this book, it's talk about a uh, pres uh, prescription drug can kill you. Yeah. I said, what? Oh, I don't take any, thank God. But I'm not telling you not to take any. But God has to deal with me in order to get me where I am right now. And sometimes people got so much of sickness in their body and the doctor, they believe the doctor more so than the word of God. The doctor said, well, this pill, wait a minute, if this pill didn't work, how you think the other pill gonna work? You know what I'm saying? So it assumes the pain. It'll ease the pain. But I know that God got a remedy. Hallelujah. When you fall in love with Jesus, hold on myself. Just fall in love with him. When you start talking about Jesus, will the pain go away? When you begin to sing some, the pain go away. When you begin to glorify God, the pain go away. Just that moment, you forgot you had pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. At that thought, Lord, why this pain is lingering? God knows you better than you know yourself. Hallelujah. You could just go off the pass a little. Hallelujah. You get, might go back in your old ways. And God said, I don't want you going back. Yeah, I'm going to let you linger a little while longer. Hallelujah. The devil touched you, but I can take it off you. But I'll let you linger for a little while longer till I get you in the place that I want you to be. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, the 12 said, most surely I say to you, he who believe in me, the works, wait a minute, the works that I do, come on now, he will do also, wait a minute, the works that Jesus do, you will do also. Now why are you sitting down on God? Why you don't have that authority over the devil? Why don't you cast out the demon? If you know demons, hallelujah, need to be cast out. God, told, come on in the house of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes people got mixed up minds. Hallelujah. They, they, their spirits are attacking their mind. Hallelujah. They, they got a, a spiritual problem. They got a physical problem. But yet and still they put on a mask. Hallelujah, and nobody can see it. But when you got the discernment of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost will warn you something is wrong here. The Holy Ghost will let you know something the enemy done snick up in the camp now. You better rebuke that demon force in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, in Mark, the first chapter, hallelujah, Jesus spoke to that demon. Hallelujah, that demon was getting ready to say, Lord, don't, don't, are we coming for our time? Don't do this and that and that. It's just a talking. And the Lord said, told him, be quiet. You got to speak with authority. When God said, be quiet. Read in Mark's first chapter, you see it. And you tell the people, I'm speaking to you, but I'm speaking to the demon. See, that's why people get off on the wrong track. Jesus said, be quiet. You're going to be like Jesus. If Jesus can tell the demon, if I be quiet, why can't you? Why can't you? He said, greater things that we will do. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. If you got a problem with that, you talk to God. Mark the first chapter, you read it for yourself. I give you the scripture to read it, praise God. Most surely, the 12th verse of John 14. Most surely I say to you, he who believe in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Now. He's going to his father. But you got to have something in you to do the greater work. Hallelujah. And that is the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. Dead with fire. Hallelujah. You can raise up the dead. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. You the blind can have eyesight to see. Hallelujah. What most important is a soul being saved. Don't get caught up in gifts. That's what's wrong with people in the church. Everybody want to preach like you. They want to teach like you. They want to sing like you. They want to praise dance like you. But you have to let the Holy Ghost allow you what he wants to do. There's many gifts. There's many talents. Everybody don't have to have the same talent. I read, like, the church have many organs uh, in their body, the people, the saints. We got different organs in our body, but we got the same spirit. The same spirit. Your spirit. My spirit. We have the same spirit of Christ in us. So, therefore, we have no reason to fight amongst us. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. And he says here, and whatever you, 13 verse, and whatever you ask in my name. He said, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And wait a minute. Now, they say they believe in God the Father, but Jesus, they don't. But don't you know that Jesus came in the image of God. Yes. For everybody's separatism, think it's three kind of religion, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You're wrong. Amen. It's only one. one. Praise be to God. But there's people today are so ignorant, they pass and they're going to lose out for the lack of knowledge. Amen. Oh, I don't see the Father. See, Thomas, hmm. Didn't even believe that Jesus had resurrected. And there's a lot of Thomas today in the church. Because a lot of people, because you might not be feeling well today or this week, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get better. You must believe that you will. With my little grandbabies, they were sick, the little twins. But one thing I admire about these babies, they love to praise the Lord. And when you have a tamarima clap your hand, they clap their hand. Even though they had fever, even though congestion in their chest, they clap their hand. And I said to them, you know what? Jesus knows he's going to bring you through this. Babies. I mean, a few months, about uh, seven, eight months. Babies. And when grown-ups are going through it, they can't even hang in there with Jesus. Their home get erupted. Everybody fighting and fussing. I don't feel good. Get away from me. Get away. I don't feel good. I, I got this here and I got that. And the baby can't even open their mouth. They can't tell you the pain and the suffering. But they believe. Hallelujah. This too will pass. It took them almost two weeks. But they're here today. They're here in church today. Thank God for it. Why is the grown people complain about everything? Oh, the children have messed up this. The children, let them mess up. Because sometimes you can tell grown people, children, what to do, and they don't want to take heed to it. But sometimes life come by experience. Trials, tribulation come by experience. Sometimes you're going to have to experience something in life. To say, you know what? I changed my mind. I ain't going that way no more. Jesus don't want you to go to hell. He didn't make hell for you, but he made it for the devil. One man that said to me, don't you know the devil is in hell? And I said, I ain't going to argue with you. I know better. But I said, he left some daughters and sons back here too. And they doing exactly what he told them to do. But they don't have to listen to the devil. Listen to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. The devil is alive. Everybody figure, well, I can do what I want to do. And that's all right. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you don't want to know the truth, don't come and ask Sister Walker. And if you don't want to hold a conversation, I know I be minding my business in the stores that I go to. And then people will come up to me and have a conversation. And you know what? I love it so much. Because my conversation is all about Jesus. If I can get Jesus in all my conversation, well, that soul to be saved, hallelujah, so let it be. So let it be. Hallelujah. And I said to another sister, she should never got in my way. 
And I said to her, I said, you shouldn't be so mean. I said, because with that mean spirit, God gave me the discernment of the spirit while I was in the store. I said, not only do you have a mean spirit, you have a witchcraft spirit. And I said, you might have run everybody else away with your spirit, but I'm not afraid of you, Satan. I'm not afraid of you. I said, I come against you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, God didn't make hell for you, but you own your way to hell with that spirit. I'm mean and hateful, and God had it your way. Hallelujah. She started speaking in another language, her language. But that's okay. I understand, too. The Holy Spirit understands all language. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what you got to be bold in the Spirit of God. Bold and courageous. Hallelujah. You're not defeated today. You're not going to be defeated this week. But the devil is defeated. Why? You let the devil defeat you. When Jesus already paid the price. Hallelujah. You just going through. Hallelujah. Whether I got healed today or whether I don't ever get healed, I still believe that Jesus is a son of the living God. Hallelujah. That he lives in the Father and the Father lives within him. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Hallelujah. I'm almost finished. And I'm talking about how to win the Father love. I mean, we try so hard to say, love one another. Love one another is like a broken record. Love one another. Wait a minute. When you fall in love with Jesus, nobody going to tell you to go over there. Uh, they don't have to say, wake up and go over there. There's somebody that needs help. God would say to you, get up. You don't know where you're going today. But then he said, I want you to go over here today. I want you to go that way today, walking on the street today. You never know who God's going to bring you in contact. You never know somebody's parents, a father, sister, mother, praying for that person. And all of a sudden, you said, Lord, I don't know why I got to go. But you start going, and all of a sudden, God sent somebody your past, and you're able to encourage them. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I said, you know, sometimes we go places, like I told the young, the young man, praise God. And I said, you know what? I don't understand why we're here. We were here for one reason. But I said, God here for another. Amen. And then as he began to talk to me and everything, and I said, you know what? You already told them what you need. I said, but then that's why you got to wait and be patient. I said, but you got to get rid of that fire water. Amen. See, when God have you to talk to people, whether they're alcoholic or drug addict or perverted, it's any walk of life. God will intervene. And I began, to, I felt the anointing of God to talk to this man. And I knew he was drinking. God knew it. And I could have called him being an alcoholic or drinking, but he said, fire water. And I said, you just need to get rid of that fire water. And he laughed. He said, oh, you're right, I do. And I said, because that fire water, it's a good thing you didn't go where you needed to go. I said, because that fire water would have got you angry and angry, and when you went where you went, I said, would have been more anger, and I said, you couldn't help yourself or nobody else. See, but when God speaks to your heart, God has called you for a purpose. Sometimes you say, Lord, I done tried, that's it. You done tried, so stop trying to win people over to Jesus. Stop trying. All you do is pray. Just pray, and God already done heard that prayer. Because, see, God can touch a person right where they are. That's right, amen. And when their heart began to just overwhelm and begin to fall in love with Jesus, yeah. then all of a sudden, there's a breakthrough for them. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever think that God can't say that no good daughter, that no good son, always in trouble, that aunt, that uncle, that husband, God can't save them. He can clean them up and they'll be on fire more than we are. They'll be on fire to go out there and stand up for Jesus. Fear would not be a factor. See, but when you're fearful of dying and standing up for Jesus, you just might as well just come to church every Sunday and get on the phone and hear saying backbite because you're not equipped to go for the war and stand against the battle of the enemy. I'm almost finished. Praise God. Then he says... Now, if 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, how many don't ask Jesus for something, you know, God for something in Jesus' name? 
And you might have said, well, I ain't got it now. Because you ain't walking, that doesn't mean you ain't got it. You ain't seeing it doesn't mean that you ain't got it. Because you ain't got the finance you've been asking for, it doesn't mean that you ain't got it. Amen. See, you ain't waiting for God. God waiting for you. Amen. He waiting for you to fall in love with him. Amen. He waiting for you to move out that haughty spirit away from you. Amen. Then you will see the hands of God. Amen. You will see the hand. You believe it. You believe God. Believe him for your family. Trust him for your family. God will bring it through when you least expect it. He will, he will come through for you. Then he says, uh, 15, if you love me, keep my commandment. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. And that he may abide with you forever. 17 said, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive this. The world loves their own, but we are God people supposed to love one another because we love God. Amen. We're supposed to help one another because we love God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It said the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither see him nor know him. But you know him, for he dwells in you and will be in you. Amen. Now, if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, why don't you wake Jesus up? If he's sleeping in there, wake him up. You're going through trials and tribulation and trouble, wake him up. Get in your secret closet and wake him up. Hallelujah, fall on your face and wake him up. Fast and pray and wake him up. What are you willing to sacrifice to wake up the Holy Spirit in you? A lot of time, people want the pastor, the evangelist, the teacher to wait something up in them. But God is saying to get that lazy spirit out of the way. I'm waiting for you to call on me. It's a personal relationship. Mama can't go for you. Daddy, sister, brother, aunt, cousin, nobody can go for you. You got to go for yourself. Everybody want to be mama, daddy. Brother, sister, auntie, but nobody want to sacrifice nothing. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to surrender for Jesus, for the love of Jesus? Hallelujah. What are you willing to sacrifice? Hallelujah. To have the love of God. Unconditioned love. The love of God that would never leave you, nor despise you, never would hurt you. The love of God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls, as well as, O Lord, baptize it with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.